Welcome to the CWTN News special presentation. I'm Raymond Arroyo. This begins our coverage of the funeral services for Mother Mary Angelica. This will be a solemn multi-day event of remembrance and thanksgiving for the life of Mother Angelica. In moments, we will take you to Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville, Alabama, for what will really be a homecoming. Mother Angelica's body will be received by her beloved sisters. This is going to be a hard week for all of us, those gathered on set, and you at home, personally and certainly professionally. Uh, I'll ask your indulgence as we proceed throughout these days of coverage. Uh, I'm joined on Mother Angelica's live set, which feels as it should, uh, here in Birmingham, Alabama, by Marcus Grodi, host of The Journey Home, which uh, the beloved host of The Journey Home. Welcome, Marcus. Yeah. And Father Patrick Mary of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word. Father, thanks for being here as well. Now, before we start, and we're, we're going to have a little conversation before we go to the live event, um, let me tell you what you can expect in the days ahead. This evening, Mother's Friars, the Missionaries of the Eternal Word, will host a special commemorating Mother's Life at 8 p.m. Eastern. That will be followed by a rosary using Mother's personal meditations on the various mysteries. And on Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we'll bring you live coverage of Mother Angelica's public visitation and the rosary from Hansville. That will be followed by a rosary in memoriam from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And then on Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we'll cover the second day of the public viewing, Solemn Vespers, at 6 p.m. Eastern, and a very special world over, commemorating Mother's Life at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, so a slightly different hour, followed by the Vigil and Rosary at 8 p.m. Eastern. Finally, on Friday, Mother Angelica will be laid to rest in the crypt of her monastery following a mass of Christian burial that will be celebrated by Archbishop Charles Chaput of Philadelphia. And the funeral mass will begin at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We hope you will join us throughout the week as we remember this faithful woman who touched so many and gave so very much to not only the people seated here, but uh, so many of you at home and around the world. Now, those of us uh, who are naturally grieving over the loss of a friend and a spiritual mother are, are going through our own difficulties, but uh, we've not spoken enough, I think, about the sisters, Mother Angelica's nuns. They will receive Mother's body in moments. Uh, I spoke with a few of them last night, but Father, give us an insight into what they're going through. I know you've been up in Hansville, back and forth, uh, surrounding these last few days. Yes, and what, what will seeing? take place? <clears throat> yes. Um, so, uh, just shortly after, you know, after we uh, finish this, the uh, the the coffin will of course arrive at the shrine. Mm -hmm. um, Father Miguel uh, will be right there when the the casket comes out, mm -hmm. and he will um, begin with a prayer. And I think what's very uh, very powerful about this particular procession into the church. Mm -hmm is actually they're going to make a stop before the statue of the Divine Child out in the right. piazza, right. Um, which is very, of course, uh, very powerful, and it's packed with meaning for Mother's life, That's true. the inspiration for building the shrine. Yep. Um, so they'll, be, they'll stop there for a couple of minutes um, before going into the shrine and having this uh, several prayers and blessings mm -hmm. um, before Mother, uh, the, the coffin will be wheeled into the back of the cloister where the sisters can certainly mm -hmm. pray. I know you mentioned about what the sisters, I know. Yeah, what are the sisters going through now? This is obviously very difficult, you know, very uh, uh, moving time for them who have lived with Mother for so many years. Um, I know some of the friars were actually there uh, at the, the time that Mother did pass, mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure that was extremely uh, difficult. Um, but at the same time, I know for a lot of us too, you know, she certainly will be greatly missed. Mm -hmm. um, but there is also a lot of joy, especially with the whole connection with Easter Sunday and the joy mm -hmm. of the resurrection. And we're already hearing, uh, I'm sure you've we've heard many yeah. comments, of many oh, people yeah. affected, even people, we've heard also reports of, of healing that's taken place through yeah. asking Mother's prayers. Um, so I'm sure that mm -hmm. will only strengthen us and encourage us as we go on. Yeah. Um, but of course, it's difficult, as you mentioned, right after her passing. Yeah, it is. But it's amazing that people are already praying to her, Marcus. Now, yeah. your thoughts on this, I mean, as we watch this conveyance of the mortal remains of mother back home for one last time before they're interred there. But um, what does this represent to her life, to the Christian life? Yeah, you know, the so many things have been going through my mind on this because I still, I'm a Catholic for 20 some years, but I still remember 
uh, the different traditions of funerals and understanding what we say to people when someone's passed, mm -hmm. even the words we use to try and convey our, our both the mixture of our Christian condolences but yet joy because if we truly believe then we, we have a great sense that, mm -hmm. that this is a, just a, a stepping stone along life's path. I, you know, I remember my mother passed a couple years ago and we were at that decision stage of when we let her go. Mm -hmm. and. And I remember standing before the doctors because we had to make some decisions. And I said, I know where her heart is. To her, life is this long. Yeah. But life in this age is this long. Yeah. I mean, that's what life, that's where mother's at. I mean, mm -hmm. this is life for her. And when I yeah. see her, her face, her smiling, that's mm -hmm. what I, I think of. You know, I think that, that you said her body is being returned to the sisters. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we watch her on TV. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people, they think they know us. Yeah, yeah. Well, through the connection of television. You're in their den, you're in their living room, you're in their home, you're in their bedroom. So where there's a connection, but we know yeah. it's not as intimate. But the reality is she is intimately now with those who have lived with her through this for yeah. a long, long time. Um, and I think we need to pray for them, particularly for them understanding this and, and receiving yeah. her and moving on and, and the mm -hmm. continued intimacy. But it's a great privilege for us to be a part of this. Sure. Yeah. Well, and they are, she said, they represented a big part of her legacy. When you asked Mother what her legacy was, it wasn't EWTN that she mentioned. Wow. She said, <laughs> my orders, mm. the sisters, the brothers, principally, and new foundations. She was obsessed mm. with new foundations. Mm -hmm. That's what she saw as the future. And, um, and we're seeing that happening. Bit by bit, we see that these, these uh, foundations that she planted being refortified, and then we see those who go out and are building new houses. That's what she wanted. New uh, tabernacles where mm -hmm. God could be worshipped and from there that radiance could go out. Now, um, I want to tell everyone and invite you to call in with your memories as we await the start of uh, the first of the funeral events of Mother Angelica. This will be a, a four-day event, uh, really starting yesterday, but uh, today is the beginning of the, the ceremonies. Uh, surrounding her passing and her final burial. You see the shrine in Hansville, Our Lady of the Angels there in the live shot. We'll take you there momentarily. The number, if you'd like to remember, Mother, if you have something to share, 800-221-9460 or 205-271-2980 if you're outside of the United States. We'd love to hear from you. Now, in moments, you're going to see representatives of EWTN, the CEO, Michael Warsaw, COO, Doug Keck, a lot of the vice presidents, um, some longtime employees, and the friars escort Mother's body into that piazza there on your screen uh, at Our Lady of the Angels. Now, as Father said, they are going to pause before the statue of the Divino Nino, which is right in the middle of the square, and then proceed into the public side of the chapel and later into the private cloistered side of the monastery chapel. Now, before Father acquaints us with some more of the details here, um, I have a little video I wanted to show you. Back in 1996, Mother began construction of Our Lady of the Angels. And she, she had an encounter with the child Jesus. We will get to that in a moment. Um, Mother actually commenced building here before her visit to Bogota. Okay, I'm going to explain that in a moment, that encounter with the child Jesus that led to the building that you're going to see her interred in, the beginning of that interment process today. She actually had broken ground on this site six months before she ever went to Bogota. Here's what she told me about that statue, the statue of the child Jesus, and its importance during the construction back in, I think, 1999. Watch this. <laughs> Mother, I want to start with this statue yeah. of the child Jesus, which is so central here. Why, first of all, why did you decide to put this image in the very center of the, uh, of the, the piazza? Well, when the child Jesus asked me to build him a temple, South America, Colombia, first of all, I didn't know what a temple was. You know, mm -hmm. I thought a temple, there's Jewish temples, there's Masani temples. Mm -hmm. But then I realized after a while that even the basilica in Rome is called a temple. Mm -hmm. But I realized after some months, some months after we started building, that I think the child Jesus wanted to be very present in America, 
uh, because of abortion. Mm. I think some women have lost the reality of how precious a child is. We have tremendous uh, abortion, uh, 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 and we have tremendous amount of people who abuse mm. their children in the worst way, the worst way. Mm -hmm. And that could be from six months to six years to 16 years. There is a passage in Isaiah that said, and a little child shall leave them. We, we've tried everything when it comes to abortion. We've tried television, radio, pamphlets, leaflets, political things, and nothing seems to be working. And I thought maybe, just maybe, if, if we proclaim the childhood of Jesus, the eternal word became a baby and then a child. If, if women could see that statue with a very special look, it's almost real. And he's got his little heart in his hand, like it says here, come to me, come to me. I want that statue, I want that small little statue and small monument. I want him to do something great. And you're looking there at a small little life who also did something great something big. She, she often said it sometimes takes little things to do big things and uh, Rita Rizzo, Mother Angelica, uh, certainly was one of those things. Uh, as I watch that, I, you fill up. Yeah. She, you know, I'd never <laughs> thought of it until I heard that. She, years before this, in the 80s, wanted to build a farm. She even oh. considered buying <laughs> the land <laughs> for unwed mothers and their children, Marcus. Wow. She wanted to have a home for them because of her own abused childhood, the you difficult know, childhood. I, I she often lived. have reflected this with, with others on the journey with Christ is that often the experiences we've gone through mm -hmm. were a part of the mysterious work of God to prepare us for what we're going to do. Even the difficult times prepare us in a unique way yeah. to have a sensitivity, a character, an appreciation. So when we see that little child there, yeah. how much in that is mother saying, I don't want others to have what I went through. Right. Mm -hmm. I want, you know, I want them to see in Christ the help for the young children. Mm -hmm. And what can we do more for young children yeah. in, in our culture? So she's mm -hmm. going to pause before that statue. Yeah. They, they take the body into the piazza and they will pause there. The significance of that in your mind, Father, as that's, we listen to that explanation. Sure, sure. You know, that's, that's a, a very powerful moment. Again, I think we're... <clears throat> Again, we can reflect on what Mother just shared with us. Mm -hmm. um, but for all of us, too, to look at, you know, she wants the divine child to, to speak to all of us. Um, again, that we shouldn't be afraid also to go to the Lord, that he came to us as a little child. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can also tie this into how he inspired her. You know, that's one of the things right. that really, yeah. um, really strikes me. One of the most inspiring things is how she was not afraid when she felt that God was calling her to do something, how That's she right. went out to, to build the temple. And she said she didn't even know what a temple right. was. Right, didn't know what it was. What the network was, so many things. You know, one of my favorite quotations from Mother, too, is she said, I'm not afraid to fail, mm -hmm. but I'm scared to death to go before the Lord and say, you know, Mother Angelica, this is what you could have done if you would have trusted more. Right. <laughs> but she did. She went out there when she didn't yeah. even know. And, and look at the fruits. So many people are affected by Well, I moment. remember when she came back from that trip in 96, and she was talking about this, and then we, we spoke at length about it later. And just to give you the quick background, uh, in Bogota, she went to promote the network that was going to South America. She gets to this shrine, a very popular shrine, mm -hmm. and she looks up into the plexiglass box that the child Jesus is in, and she believed, claimed, the statue turned to her and said, build me a temple, and I will help those who help you. Well, she said, First of all, I didn't know what a temple was. Second of all, when I heard this, help those who help, she said, I thought it was like Jim Baker. So, Jim Baker was an evangelist who, so, you know, I'm going to lock myself away unless you send the money now. Um, and, and, and so she was confused by this. Yeah. It took time, and often this is how those inspirations would come to her. In bits and pieces, she couldn't see the whole path. And she used to say, Franciscan providence is trusting each step, and you get the grace as you step. And that, you see it there. Yeah. And I love that she, they're pausing 
there because it, she always wanted that to be the entryway so that God wasn't scary to children, to people who'd sinned. Sure. She wanted that child welcoming them. And in many ways, she became that child who needed care in her last years That's right. um, and was radiant like a child so many times when I went to see her um, in those last years. She was beautiful to see, beautiful to see. You know, something else that, that I wanted to reflect on as we're moving forward here with this is uh, something that Doug Keck said last night, and it just yeah. struck me, I never, I never realized this, mm -hmm. that a part of mother's goals, especially in the early 90s when she went through mm -hmm. the change, and you know more about this than I do, in terms of, in terms of change of her attitude towards the church right. and as a result of World Youth Day, mm -hmm. was a desire to preserve the devotions that so many in the post Vatican Council, not the Council itself, but so many after the Council were just thinking that we need to put all that stuff away. And when we think about that is what we're going to see in the next yeah. couple of days, how much of what we're going to see and experience is specifically because yeah. of what Mother has done to preserve devotions. Yeah, you're right. No, I, I, I often say it, Mother Angelica saved the church in the United States and maybe around the world. When you hear Latin in a parish, yeah. wherever you are, when you see people striking their breast during the creed, Mother Angelica is really, she was the mm -hmm. reservoir of that and the, the vanguard of it. She propagated and made it normative, normal mm -hmm. to be orthodox and to sh fly yeah. your colors. She did that. No one else did at a time when everything was up for grabs. And boy, did she catch hell for it. Let's just yeah. say it. Yeah. A lot of people didn't like it. And a lot of people tried to stop her. And I've written about most of them. <laughs> Go ahead, Father. I wanted to add. Sure, sure. Um, and that, that gives courage to so many people, too, yeah. that you're going to come up across all kinds of, uh, you know, opposition. But mm -hmm. she held fast. And that gives so many people encouragement um, to have the, and it's also the clarity that she had. You never second-guessed what she no. was talking about. Well, you knew what, you, you knew what she was talking about the first time she said it. That's right. That's right. You know, and she was, and she had, she inspires a lot of seminarians too, and younger mm -hmm. priests too. You know, again, yep. her faithfulness, um, a lot of things that we didn't get growing up in catechesis, and so there's a great hunger, well, and she gives that to us with devotion. Giving the courage of devotions this morning when we at, at, we did the holy hour this morning. That's right. Think about every prayer that was in there, the litanies, yep. mm -hmm. uh, the dedication to surrender to the Sacred mm -hmm. Heart, all those things, which in some ways are of a a different age yes. that are here now because they've yeah. been preserved and then broadcast around the world yeah. hmm. as a result of her commitment. No, she continued them. Yeah. She continued yeah. them. Right. She, she, she extended that tradition and made it contemporary. That's the great legacy of Mother Angelica. You will see it in full flower today, even after her passing. As we, um, in a moment, you'll see her body received by her sisters in Hansville, Alabama. Whilst we await that moment, we have on the line with us Kathy, from Pennsylvania. You wanted to say what, Kathy? Hello? Yes, Kathy, go ahead. Hi, Raymond and Marcus Hi. and and all your guests. Um, just wanted to send my condolences. Um, Mother Angelica was a true defender of the faith. Um, I've been a lifelong Catholic and I've watched her, um, you know, rerun programs almost probably every one of them for the past 12 years. I have a mm -hmm. chronic illness and um, through her teachings, it has really given meaning to my suffering, mm -hmm. uh, my suffer. And, um, you know, I'm trying, like, through what her teaching was to, mm -hmm. you know, use it, use it for good, you know, use it to purify our own souls and to, to unite it with what Jesus went through and the passion. And I try to do that every day, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I still struggle with it. But mm -hmm. she was a true mother. Um, a true mother. Um, I I hope that um, EWTN still you know will show her her programming. Oh, oh sure. rest assured, <laughs> Kathy, that her programming will continue. I that I can promise. Um, what, what I what I love about your call is, I do think so much of Mother's ministry, the focus of her life, and Marcus tapped into it earlier, the background, the suffering yeah. she went through shaped her and perfected her and created her to be just that instrument of grace for people like you, people who are suffering, who are hurting, and who need that spiritual witness and the support to go on, the hope. Yes. She brought that to you, 
And you know why she could speak so authoritatively and so movingly and convincingly to people like you, Kathy? Because she was one of you. Mm -hmm. She suffered yeah. too. And in her last days, boy, did she suffer. I mean, I just, I've been, I've been focusing on that period now. And it's... Well, she was also such a, a person of the word, yeah. yes. of scripture. I yeah. mean, I mean mm -hmm. she was in the word. And uh, in many ways, our, our non-Catholic brothers and sisters appreciate that, not in her love for Christ, but in the Word. And, and what, uh, what comes to my mind is that, that wonderful verse in Romans 8, where it says that we call our God Abba Father, uh, we're sons and daughters, heirs, provided we suffer in the necessity of that. No, and, and she certainly is a witness to that, yeah. and, and boy, did she use suffering. Uh, we are now about to bring you live, you see it on your screen, uh, the start of today's ceremony. Mother Angelica's body will be returned to her monastery uh, in a rite that um, uh, they call it the reception of the body. This rite will be performed followed by, followed by the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, a devotion certainly well known to anyone who has watched EWTN over the years. Father, the importance of this again, the liturgical importance of this. Sure. We know that um, praying for the dead is a spiritual work of mercy. We know when someone dies, um, we hope that God willing they're, they've made it, you know, that mm -hmm. mothers, we know she is a very holy woman, mm -hmm. um, but we still pray for her. And I know she appreciates us praying for yeah. her. Um, mm -hmm. So this is what we're doing. We're, we're praying on her behalf, asking God to have mercy on her. It's also a spiritual help for us as well to give us that hope that, again, this is very difficult. Yeah. Um, so we're praying for that hope and we look forward to the resurrection. But this whole thing, Again, we're asking that God might have mercy on her and that she might have eternal rest. Mm -hmm. So there will be uh, blessings of her, of the casket of her remains, um, the sprinkling of holy water, which brings to mind, again, our baptism, right. which we first received that promise of eternal life. And we'll hear that. I think there's lines in the right yes. reminding us of the baptismal waters that you and know, that's washed over Rita Rizzo. And that's what's so powerful about the, this ritual and that is that we don't have to be spontaneous, that it's our theology, what God has revealed to us is, re, is, is given mm -hmm. through the prayers, our faith that's been revealed to us. Very quick call to Peter in New York just before we begin. I may have to cut you off, but go ahead, Peter, very quickly. Hi, I, I'm just so grateful for Mother Angelica having grown up in the 80s and 90s, having had her in our home every night and being able to always have that touch tone mm. of having her you know, bring, bring the faith to our everyday lives and then yeah. going to school and talking about my friends in the lunchroom. <laughs> so I always felt very grateful for that presence and now having children of my own and being able mm -hmm. to still be able to share that and hopefully have that in their lives for them too. Yeah. And yet yesterday I was listening to Raymond's book and just feeling I wanted to have that connection again. Hmm. And I'm just very, very grateful yeah. we to are have all... grown up in this time with her. We are all grateful. Thank you for the call, Peter. That is a, certainly something I think we all share. Um, you know, I, I, sitting out here is hard because um, I keep thinking of, you know, she sat in this chair for all those years, um, and I would be trembling over there, Marcus. Uh, so I'm happy to not be in that position for once. But um, it was it, it, the, the legacy, and it goes on and on and on. That is what's so beautiful because Peter like so many, they found this nugget of faith, this path. She was the, the, the spark for it. And it goes on. You see them there, they're there with those little children. It goes on through mm. and into children. And you know, I, um, the, the mother, she, she's inspired so many, so many things in my life, in all of our yeah. lives. I mean, yeah. Marcus Grote, I would never, ever have, have, have known, would have known. gone on television, right. uh, brought these, these stories of major conversions, I mean, high-cost, high-stake conversions, without her. Yeah. In fact, I remember that first night um, that I was on her program mm -hmm. and met with her just before the show, and we're gathering for prayer. We'd had no preparation for the program. <laughs> that and was I, the preparation. And I'm going to, well, that's the point. Yeah. We're going to come on, and we gathered together, and her statement was, what do we want to talk about tonight? She says, joy. Mm -hmm. They said joy. All right, tonight's joy. In other words, they, they, she filed their inspiration yeah. on what people needed to hear. Beautiful. And there, here is her final homecoming. Um, Mother Angelica is, remains in the hearse, her body, makes its way onto the grounds of Our Lady of the Angels Monastery and approaches the piazza. This is the reception of the body, the ceremony we're about to see, followed by the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, which you will see take place inside 
Our Lady of the Angels Monastery, a monastery she labored so many years to build um, with very exacting details and her plan of action, inspired by the child Jesus, who will get a momentary um, pause before the statue that she, she built in his honor, and, uh, and this whole shrine built in his honor. And it represents, I think, the last spiritual movement of Mother Angelica, that devotion to the child Jesus. I don't know, I don't know the history behind this kind of liturgical celebration, but I'm wondering if there's a great uh, deep necessity for the body to be removed and brought back for a family to move forward. You know what I'm saying? That when, when, a, when a person dies in the midst of a family, as she mm -hmm. did in the midst of the sisters, for them to be able to let go, for her to move forward, if there's a, 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 an important necessity, psychological as well as spiritual, for the body to have been gone and then to be brought back for them to move forward. Well, remember that beautiful book she wrote on the Eucharist, to leave and yet to stay, to leave and stay. Mm -hmm. And really, she comes home forever now. She's going to be interred in the crypt but beneath the main chapel of this, of this shrine she built in Hansville. Above her mother May, An intimacy there that she'll share in a, yes. again w with her sisters. Who became and, one of her sisters. Yeah, that's right. uh, May Rizzo became uh, Sister Mary David. Mm -hmm. They had a rather tempestuous relationship, <laughs> or just Italian, you know, mm -hmm. depends. And um, well, even your response, Raymond, reminds us that sometimes we don't know how we're going to respond until someone actually goes. Yeah. Sometimes we're going to be stronger. We just it, it's there. It's inside. It was way. It takes a while to yeah. understand how much someone well, means to us. You so. think with all the years, and, and we've yeah. seen her. I mean, we've, yeah. we've all yeah. gone up and seen her, yeah. and you think you're prepared. And um, yeah. the moment yeah. comes, and you're really, you're kind of ambushed by it. I mean, I know I am, and it's hard being out here, I have to tell you. Wow. Uh, the vice presidents, uh, the president of EWTN and, and COO are all gathered there um, waiting to receive the body outside the, the hearse, um, Father Joseph at the head, and, um, and the friars as well. You know, we also thank God for the gift of our faith that one of the, one of the articles of our faith is we believe in the communion of saints. And that all this is difficult, you know, this transition, that's yeah. what we believe, that death is not the end, it's the beginning, as St. Therese would say. And I'm, what I'm inspired by is something that Blessed Miguel Pro said, who was martyred for the faith. And he said, you know, if I'm caught before he was, he was caught, and go, he said, be prepared to ask me for many things. You know? ah. <laughs> and that, we, I'm sure, you know, people, again, are already asking Mother to pray and intercede for us. But yep. our connection with her will actually be strengthened. I myself have felt a stronger connection over the past couple of days uh, yeah. with her, certainly. Um, and we know that she's, she's here. Yeah. You know? Well, there, there is the, uh, the casket being removed from the hearse, uh, making its way into the piazza. The, um, some of the pallbearers here um, you will recognize. That's Jody Copeland Jody. at the bottom yeah. of your screen, a longtime yeah. employee of EWTN from the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 35 yeah. years he's been with EWTN. Yeah. Um, of course, members of the, the Friars, the Knights of the Eucharist, a, 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 a order up in Hansville, Brother Leo. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And Amen. here's the ceremony. Dear friends in Christ, in the name of Jesus and of his church, we gather to pray for Mother Mary Angelica of the Annunciation, that God may bring her to everlasting peace and rest. We share the pain of loss, but the promise of eternal life gives us hope. Let us comfort one another with these words. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. Lord, Mother Angelica is gone now from this earthly dwelling and has left behind those who mourn her absence. 
Grant that as we grieve for our sister, we may hold her memory dear and live in hope of the eternal kingdom where you will bring us together again. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord guards our coming in and our going out. May God be with us today as we make this last journey with our sister. in Hansville, Alabama. The procession of many of her longtime employees, the presidents, vice presidents of EWTN, as well as her friars and members of the uh, Knights of the Eucharist are in this procession. They will make their way through the piazza to a statue of the child Jesus in the center of the uh, square here. She thought it very important to have this piazza. She said she wanted it to be a welcoming place to draw people in. And you notice there's no parking in the piazza. You have to walk, which she said, I want people to know they're on a pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. So right. there's no car to door access. You've got you to hoof it. And there is Mother Angelica's. Uh, and it's a beautiful place if people haven't been there. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Mother Angelica's remains are being brought uh, by the pallbearers on the right-hand side of your screen. And that pause we mentioned a moment ago before the statue of the child Jesus will happen momentarily.
they are now entering the piazza. It, it looks like they've been in it for a while, but they're actually just entering it on that ramp uh, and making their way toward that statue of the child Jesus. Procession pauses for a moment here to acknowledge the child Jesus, his special activity in the life of mother, and uh, his relationship with her in her later, later years particularly. This was not a devotion she had as a young girl, or as, a, or as a young nun, or even throughout most of her public life. It only happened in 1996 yes. uh, during this trip to Bogota, Colombia when she was taken to this shrine of the Divino Nino. Mm -hmm. And um, that was her first acquaintance with him. Yeah. You made a comment earlier, uh, Raymond, about uh, the child, um, especially those of us that come from other traditions and have no tradition of little Jesuses. And, mm -hmm. and uh, how do you deal with the infant of Prague and things like that, and, and devotions like that? But I think your comment about for children especially, it helps their intimacy with Christ. You know, the, 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 the stages we go through, the intimacy with Christ, so especially children that might have a difficulty with parents or with experiences they have. They can have an intimacy with Christ and, and, uh, and the same thing with Our Lady. You know, uh, you know the, the young Mary versus mm -hmm. the mother Mary. It's yeah, and as Christ is the, the model of every virtue, too, looking at children to be obedient to their parents, mm -hmm. as, as we hear that from the scriptures. Um, and also, you know, the, the fact that God became one of us as a child. He didn't have to do that. You know, he could have yeah. came as a fully grown man. But yeah. again, it makes him so approachable. that he, That's what Mother is always about, is, is getting us to encounter yeah. Christ. And she, um, was, she had a very childlike, you know, uh, quality. And sure. I don't mean juvenile. I mean a, a childlike wonder. Uh, that into old age she had. Mm -hmm. And um, she was, that didn't only make her great fun, but it also gave her the availability, the room in her life for wonders That's right. and God's miraculous hand, right. which she was the beneficiary of and the instrument of mm -hmm. in some ways. Uh, he used her as an instrument to bring so much uh, to so many. That's right. And it was that, you know, that, that openness, that... Um, a childlike approach. The, the divine child is the perfect um, devotion, which was her later devotion in life. And uh, to have her pause, her, her body pause here, just before its entry into the chapel that she built to honor him, seems a perfect note. Mm -hmm. yes. We're reminded in the Gospels as well, unless you become like little children, you know, enter the kingdom of heaven. Yep. As you mentioned, Raymond, she certainly exhibited this to us as a witness. Mm -hmm. um, and that brought great freedom, as you mentioned, too, that uh, the availability, yeah. um, that she wasn't paralyzed by all these fears, that she said, okay, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. Well, that's the wonder of mother. Mm -hmm. Even the disability, even the lack of education, even the lack of influence or pedigree, she was free to do God's yes. will. She was the only one, perhaps, who was free to do God's mm. will. And therefore, she was chosen. Yeah. She was chosen. Now she makes uh, mother's remains, make their last um, passage here through the piazza. She will be interred inside um, the crypt of Our Lady of the Angels Monastery and the shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament, of course the focus of her life, the Blessed Sacrament, Christ in the Eucharist. Um, she often said, prayer is not something but someone. And I think you could also say that about her faith. And um, everything she did, from the building of this monastery to the building of the network, to her pamphlet ministry, <laughs> to the audio tape she mass produced to the fishing lures to the fishing, fishing lures <laughs> it was all about gathering others to her beloved to the savior whom she sacrificed a great deal for i used to say she paid the cost to be the boss 
Mm. Yeah. And she did. Yeah, my, my last time with, well, second to last time with her. It's been a long time. Uh, there in this, in this uh, wonderful church, she was behind the grill there with the sisters and, and uh, I was with the Monsignor and we were sitting there and he was talking a lot to her. I, I don't know what to say when I'm with her. Mm -hmm. It's been tough the last, whenever I have yeah. been with her, didn't, just didn't know what to say. Didn't matter, she held my hand. Mm -hmm. She didn't say, she just smiled and squeezed. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned last night, sometimes when she would squeeze, it was like, we'll just put up with this guy long. <laughs> <Yeah. isn't> <laughs> <laughs> she was communicating. Well, in those, yeah, in those last years, Mother couldn't really communicate in the last yeah. years at all. And, um, you know, I would call in. I tried to call in every week. And uh, many times, I'd, it was a solo act. You know, I, I, I did a lot of the talking. Occasionally, she would, mm, mm. You know, and the sisters would say, she's listening. She's listening. <laughs> um, but uh, and she and she would there would you know she would react now Mother Angelica's body entering the shrine she built for the Lord in 1996 completed in 1999 and what a day that was when this building was inaugurated the kickoff and the consecration of this uh, beautiful chapel and you see it here the, the, the mahogany uh, entryway the jasper and marble floors, every detail was just so, had to be just so. In fact, I was reading the other night um, in the biography. The God of all consolation be with you. We'll go to the live with event. Your in the waters of baptism, Mother Mary Angelica died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that the The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. I believe that I, believe I, that I shall see the good things of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord. This is 
the first movement in Mother Angelica's funeral My brothers services. and sisters, we, bring this to we believe life. that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins. Let us pray asking God to gather Mother Mary Angelica of the, of the Annunciation to Himself. Lord, in our grief, we turn to you. Are you not the God of love who opened your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for your servant, Mother Angelica, whom you have called out of this world. Lead her to your kingdom of light and peace and count her among the saints in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. As I watch this, it's just amazing to think how much we now pray the chaplet of the divine mercy for the repose of the soul of our dearest Mother Mary Angelica. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, this thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In the atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Oh. 
Let us pray. Lord God, in whom all find refuge, we appeal to your boundless mercy. Grant to the soul of your servant, Mother Angelica, a kindly welcome, cleansing of sin, release from the chains of death, and entry into everlasting life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now you will see the pallbearers uh, remove Mother's body and take the casket into the enclosure. On the other side of that rear dose, that golden wall you're seeing, is the sister's side of the monastery chapel. It is hidden from public view. Mother's body will be taken there so the sisters can have a private visitation overnight with mother. Mm -hmm. Father, explain to people this, people looking in, they said, what is this, cloister side, public side? Yes, so uh, the Poor Clares of Perpetual Adoration are a cloistered community um, so they have their own uh, monastery where they live. And um, so it is, in a sense, separated. You know, they certainly pray and make sacrifices for the world, um, but there are uh, cloistered areas that are just for the nuns. Um, in a sense, that's, uh, it helps them, gives them that, that atmosphere to be completely dedicated to the Lord in prayer and sacrifice. So this is a very special moment for them where it'll just be them, uh, of course, with the remains of mother. Um, and so that's a, a very intimate moment for them in prayer. And this is a wide shot of the uh, chapels. And uh, the body will now be taken into that the adoration chapel on the, on the sister's side, just on the rear side of the altar you're seeing there. And here um, is the procession entering the enclosure. This is the hallway that leads to the, the sisters' quarters, the enclosure of the monastery, where the public would normally not enter. But uh, this limited procession will be to the chapel down the hall, and then, of course, all of the lay people will exit, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the sisters will then have some moments of prayer and privacy mm -hmm. to visit uh, with their beloved mother, Reverend Mother. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus, your thoughts as you watch this well, ceremony take place and mother's final return home. Well, as I, I'm not sure what a comment I made earlier uh, was heard because of the microphones, but when we watch the different people that so many of us have seen for so many years on EWTN mm -hmm. uh, and notice the changes in their life as a result of not just working at EWTN, but because of their intimacy with mother, like Father Miguel, yeah. you know, Father Joseph, uh, and you know them, of course, very, yeah. very yeah. intimately. I mean, how their lives have been radically changed through the things that she established, that she That's opened, right. that the Holy Spirit was able to change her life. Here you are. Absolutely. You yeah. know, and in fact, it was through the building of the shrine. I had my own conversion and uh, calling to the priesthood is at the Shrine of the Blessed Sacrament. Wow. The year 2000, I was a freshman in college. Really? So Mother's great love for the liturgy, for to, to give God the best. Uh, touched me. I know it touched many other lives as well. Mm. Um, again, Mother's great love for the Lord. Well, uh, certainly. We, we will take a few of your calls. I know you want to call in. 
share your memories, your thoughts, and, and your feelings, which, um, you know, I know all of our emotions are a little raw these mm. days. Um, and this is just the first of a series of public events. Tomorrow will be the beginning of the public events, and there will be a public viewing of Mother's Body uh, tomorrow and Thursday, and then the burial will be Friday. Before I, I go to phone calls, I have to share this with you while we, whilst we talk about the <laughs> shrine of the most blessed sacrament. Mm -hmm. Mother was r really criticized when she began to build this monastery. And I want to I want to stay with the video for a moment here. I'll just pause. This is uh, shots inside the cloister, just before they bring Mother's body into the chapel. That's the enclosure door, actually, with those two uh, angels on either side. I guess that was a shot of the hallway leading to this door earlier. That's right. And that is the enclosure door itself. Yeah. Ah, the lay people are staying outside the enclosure. It's, it's just the friar's uh, and, and mother's um, body, the casket mm -hmm. that moves into the enclosure. Yeah. And the door closes behind her. Hmm. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of um, when she entered St. Paul's Shrine which I had forgotten about. She entered St. Paul's Shrine in Cleveland, mm -hmm. and it was a monastery, not unlike this one. It's a beautiful place. I was just there a few months ago um, on Euclid Avenue in Cleveland. And um, she first entered a shrine, and we just saw her enter one for the last time. It, uh, it seems, you know, in many ways, the circle is being completed mm -hmm. here um, of mother's life. Uh, at 21, she went into the monastery thinking she would never come out again. She mm -hmm. vowed to be a contemplative, to be <laughs> locked away with God in the enclosure, to pray for the reparation of the world, mm -hmm. and to intercede for everybody on the, in the outside world. And she really has spent certainly these last 15 years intensely, but before that, in this life. And uh, now she goes in for the last time. If you make yourself available to Jesus, you never know what lives will be changed. Mm -hmm. And that's mother. Yeah. And it's a message to all of us. If you make yourself, I remember how many years ago, 40 years ago, when by grace I surrendered to Christ and said, Lord, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, here I am sitting with you, Raymond. <laughs> oh, you know, boy. Purgatory. You, know, <laughs> you got purgatory. You know, God, you too. You know, mm -hmm. we just, if we make ourselves, of course, we're responding to grace anyway, but if we then respond to that grace and say, Lord, okay, whatever you want to do. And if we keep ourselves based on him rather than what we might be or mm. what our legacy might be, that wasn't mother, it wasn't okay. about her legacy and all the foundations you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. And so, and for a long time, I know that we've been thinking, how many years thinking, is this going to be it? Is, is this mm. coming? Uh, when, when, when is it going to be mm. your time? Mm. Long time we thought. No, no, well, we have a, we have a, um, a, a disrespect I think, for lives, particularly those that are impaired or those yeah. that are disabled or those that are ill or old. We have a real disrespect as a culture. I was at a gathering of not unfaithful people. These were good people. And during a Q&A, someone raised their hand and they said, how is Mother Angelica? And I said, well, she's very quiet these days. This is just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. I said, she's very quiet these days. She's, you know, she's obviously in prayer. At that time, she wasn't suffering. I said, but you know, this has been a long struggle for her. Someone who was so vivacious, so outspoken, sure. suddenly her voice stilled and confined to one room in her monastery. Um, and he said, well, uh, she clearly has no quality of life. I mean, what's her quality of life like? And I got my Italian <laughs> dander up. And I said, her, believe me, her quality of life is a heck of a lot better than yours because you don't realize the good she's doing right now. Absolutely. You'll never be able to calculate it. Absolutely. And none of us will. But uh, the good she has done over these many years, building all of this, bringing all of us together, changing lives, just the ones here and in this room, but so many millions more. Mm -hmm. The emails and tweets we've been getting and the Facebook postings have been unbelievable. Um, the lives changed. 24 years ago, I was flipping television and I was in this state. And now I realized and then I realized and I, I, I converted. I got off of drugs. I saved my marriage. <laughs> 
the yeah. graces and the fruit of this life. Especially, Little Rita Rizzo is just yeah. Especially through the power of her suffering. Like you said, you know, this just came out. Uh, it's becoming more public what she said a while back. She said, if he ever gets to the point, I want you to put those tubes down my throat. Give me the medicine I need. Because yeah. she saw every, it's a moment to offer yeah. up to God in love. I want to go to Javier, who is joining us from Florida. Javier, go ahead. What is your comment? Hi, how are you? God bless well, you all. Thank you. Um, yes, in my uh, humble opinion, I, I think that one of the biggest legacies that Mother Angelica left the church is that she changed the perception of the church uh, mm -hmm. to be one uh, more open to everybody, but at the same time, preserving uh, truth, preserving yeah. truth yeah. in its yeah. traditions and, and magisteri magisterium. Yeah. And, and also... Uh, a huge, uh, also she promoted reverence for the Eucharist as well. So yep. um, I just wanted to say that and and um, and lots of blessings to everybody. Huh? And I, I'm united with you folks in your grief. Thank you, Javier. Thank you. It, it, it is, she also created a family. You know, the girl who had no family, the girl from the family that was shattered, created a family. Look, there she is with Father Benedict Groeschel. Uh, you know, he was almost the father figure, and she the mother figure for so many years. And, the, the, you know, the papacy of John Paul II beginning at almost the same moment as mother was inspired to start EWTN, 1978, October of that year. Their lives really were like parallel trains. And he was the great father figure, I think, of her life, spiritually yeah. speaking. Um, she so loved him. She so loved being with him, presenting the, the, the satellites to him. Um, and it is, you know, we, obviously we grieve, but we celebrate too. Oh, boy. You know, I, I could give a thousand examples, but one particular night of the journey home reminds me of just what, what her little surrender to Christ has done. I happened to be interviewing two sisters, uh, mm -hmm. real sisters, not yeah. religious sisters yeah. from Canada. And the one was telling her story of coming back to faith out of atheism, and EWTN had had a part in that. But mm. as she's talking live on the program, telling her story, then we got a phone call, just like we just got. Oh. And it was a woman that said, just need to tell you that I'm in a hotel room, and I'm an atheist, and, I, and she said, honestly, I was here to commit suicide, oh my God. and I was delaying, and she said, I turned on the TV, in, and as soon as I turned it on, I hit your channel, and the first word I heard was atheist. And so I listened. And in tears, she said, I'm not saying I'm going to become a Catholic, but you've saved my life. Mm. There's mm. an example of just one simple thing that Mother yeah. had no idea, yeah. mm -hmm. but all these things have led to changes of so many, like, yeah. the, like the man we just yeah. heard a moment yeah. ago. Uh, here's April calling from Wisconsin. April, go ahead. Hi. Hi, Hi. guys. I'm sorry for your loss. Um, I wanted to share some things about Mother Angelica. It just doesn't seem real. It's almost like losing a family member. Um, when I was pregnant with my daughter, it's been over 15 years now, going on 16. Um, I had a lot of answer questions for God. And I grew up in church, and I read the Bible, but I wasn't really dedicated like I should have been then, mm. even though I prayed and read the Bible. But I had a lot of questions for God, and I was surprised the first time I ever turned on EWTN, I was pregnant, laying in bed, and every single question that I had asked God for answers to, I saw Mother Angelica on TV, and she answered them. Huh. And I knew then when it hit my spirit and hit my soul that God worked through her and spoke to her, that she's the real deal. <laughs> and um, my daughter and I have learned to pray the rosary through Mother Angelica and her sisters. Mm -hmm. EWT has been a blessing to me and others. It has helped me even pray for others that didn't know God and helped save their soul. And I know that God has received one of his most precious and blessed gifts back that he's given to us on earth. And I know that he's going to kiss Mother Angelica and tell her, Job well done, because you changed my life. You changed so others, so many others. Hmm. And EWTN, Raymond, I've listened to your show and the guest that's on there now. I've listened to you guys speak before. And you all have been a blessing and saving souls. And I just thank God for the network, for the work Mother Angelica has done. And blessing this world with her for the 93 years because 
she not only changed her life and saved their life, she changed and saved mine as well as so many others. So yeah. God bless the network, and um, I hope oh, that you do you. keep playing Mother Angelica tapes because today I was going through something, and then I just looked at Mother Angelica. I turned everything off just to focus on EWTN today. But I have found out because I'm always checking up on Mother Angelica yeah. and praying for her in the rosary. Yeah. And she turned and looked at the TV. When I looked at the TV, how she turned and how she said you can get through anything with God, you know, I just knew she was speaking to me mm-hmm. because that's where I used to draw my yeah. strength from and still do EWT and do the prayers, do the novena. And um, it just keeps me strong. Okay. And I just thank God for you guys and no, the dedication you, that you still have for her. And I just. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you, April. We're delighted you called. No, it's a, um, I mean, April's one of those many people. I love what she said. I watched Mother Angelica. She was the real deal. <laughs> That's what I always thought when I was out here with her. You know, well, we knew that. She t- yeah, but she, but she really, that connection with the public, mm-hmm. who were no longer the public, but family. And you heard April say it. Uh, I feel like a family member has died. Yeah. And it's yeah. true. Yeah. It's true, because a family member has died. I mean, a mother created, the girl who had no family created this international family. It was the first time that people, we, we take it for granted now, because it happens almost every other day, but in, in the 1980s, people didn't see a pope live with regularity. You saw him on the news, little bits, 30 seconds, that was it. Mm-hmm. You might have read about him in the paper. That intimacy Mother Angelica was one of the vehicles of the intimacy of internationalizing and universalizing the papacy in a way that before then, you had to go to Rome to be with the Pope. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you could sit in your own living room and be with him. She did that. Hmm. I think also it's very interesting what April said that when she had all those questions and Mother addressed the questions she had, your mother was so natural. And we talked about earlier, like you said, she'd come up before the show and said, what are we going to talk about? She was completely, because she was so closely united with the Lord in prayer, she was open to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. And just to yeah. think how many times that the Holy Spirit gave her exactly what she needed yep. to address someone who was going through these big questions. Admit it, Marcus. You were ter- You and I co-hosted the show with her the yes. last year, year and a half. Uh, it, it was terrifying some nights well, when you went out there. I was, in fact, I was thinking about that a while ago, That the, really other than last night. The yeah. last time I sat in this chair was when oh, she was there wow. during those times when we were co-hosting. It's mm-hmm. been that long since I've been here. Yeah. And uh, it was tough. But I felt like our presence there gave her c- courage through this yeah. tough time for her, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, I mean, we're just having fun with her. No, well, that's what it was. It, it ended up being playtime. I mean, I, I, you know, people, I was on a radio interview and they said, you know, what, is this, what, what does this loss mean to you? I said, well, I lost, I lost a friend. I lost a mother. Yeah. I, in some ways, I lost a playmate. Yeah. But as you also said, that I'm not sure sh- you said that, whether she'd like all this fault or all that's going on, you, you yeah. know, that's not her. I mean, no, she, it was, she, she wants was, us to be, be joyful about yeah. this is what she's looked forward to for not just a couple of years, but for all her life. It's like, remember Paul saying in scripture, I don't know if I want to go or stay. Right. Hmm. Uh, you know, I'm ready to go, but I'll do what the Lord I'll wants, do what me, he to wants me to do. Yeah. He wants to be. And that's what she's been like for so many yeah. years. I'm sure she's saying, you know, any day now, Lord. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Know, but the Lord had a different plan. She yeah. confided um, some things in those last years to me, and I, I, um, I'm updating the biography, and I put some of those in, and uh, it, it really it taught me so much about how this life is really about leaving it. Hmm. This is, she said, this is your training period. Mm-hmm. You make your heaven or your hell right here. She said, you don't go there. You start here. here. Your hell or your heaven begins right here, and then it continues. And look at the life she led. Yeah. You know, truly is any a final thoughts? Yeah, a truly pilgrimage. Is, like we're talking about the shrine, you know, the whole thing leading up when you start yeah. at the white fence, you're going in. It's yeah. to remind us that's not about this life. It's it's heaven. Yeah, and there's no door service there either. You've got to <laughs> walk all the way through the piazza. Right. <laughs> yeah. What a preparation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, Marcus, yeah. Father Patrick, thank you so much for being with me oh, and with all of thank us you. for this uh, beautiful event. That concludes the coverage of the reception of Mother Angelica's remains, uh, her body, to her beloved home, Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville. Now join us on Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time for the public visitation and rosary. 
for Mother Angelica from Hansville. Go to EWTN.com for a full rundown of events and all of the showtimes in your area. Again, thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Father Patrick, Mary, and thank you for joining us. On behalf of the staff and crew of EWTN News, I'm Raymond Arroyo. We thank you for watching. God bless Mother, and may she rest in peace.